What does filmed for IMAX mean? It isn't just a movie that'll look great on IMAX's screens. It means that hiding from a sandstorm feels like fear in every flicker. And every triumph is felt in every sound wave. And the things we've only imagined, you can truly experience those too. That's what filmed for IMAX means. Get tickets to experience Dune Part 2 now and IMAX's exclusive expanded aspect ratio. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Sesame Bison and Carta. That's, that's awesome, man. Thanks. That's a very, um, very great name. So, um... S-B-E, yep. Yep. This is going to be the first episode in a new series that I've named the <clears throat> Arcade Movie Reviews. So, um, <laughs> where we take a look at movies based on video games. Um, yeah. Based on yeah. video games. A, a movie video game, or, or yeah, rather a video mm-hmm. game movie. You know, because um, there's, there's been so many great ones. Oh, like Mortal Kombat Annihilation? So, I mean, totally. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, or there's, Double there, Dragon? There's been so many bad ones. There's very few good ones. Um, this is, yeah, there's, there's some. There's a, yeah, yeah, a few good ones, but it's... Very yeah, few. Definitely, or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Um. so, uh, yes, today we are covering Street Fighter, The Legend of Chung Li. Oh, Yes, um, yep. a movie a movie that came out in the year two thousand and nine of our Lord, and um, <laughs> of our Lord Bison. Yes, it was a it was a uh, PG thirteen film. It was a hun- It was an hour and thirty six minutes, but it felt like about five days long. Yeah, I literally had to watch it in three sessions. I don't blame you. Because um, <laughs> it was so boring. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was uh, directed by Andrzej A N D R Z E J. Okay. Bart Kowick Kowak Kowak B A R T K O W I A K. He's a Polish man with a very okay. Pol- with a very Polish name. So yeah. just that I unfortunately as an American cannot pronounce. So um Right boy. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm a I'm I'm a I'm a white boy. Um No, Polish is like notoriously like hard like to pronounce. Like all yeah. the European languages it's like seen as like one of the most difficult because like none of the words or none of the letters like are pronounced how they actually yeah. read like you know what I mean? Like so, so this guy uh, started out as a the director started out as a cinematographer, and um, he was like the director of photography for um movies such as Trespass, Thirteen Days, Lethal Weapon Four, U.S. Marshals, uh, The Devil's Advocate, Dante's Peak, <clears throat> um, Jade, Species, some. Damn, decent, some decent movies that um yeah. s- speed okay um falling down Got it. twins yeah. um prince's honor um the verdict 
a lot of really good movies. He was the yeah, that's like a pretty decent resume right there. Yeah, like, he, he he was around. These were these were him as the cinematographer, not the director. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, but you think being on those films, he may have learned something. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing against him. Um, as far as his directing output goes, Romeo Must Die is one of his movies. Mm-hmm. Which is a decent movie. Yeah. Exit Wounds with uh, Steven Seagal. Yeah. Um, Cradle to the Grave. Doom, another video game movie. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. With the black. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, more recently, he's done some movies called Maxim- Maximum Impact and Dead Reckoning that I'm not familiar with. So... Yeah, either my. Yeah. Anyways, and it was written by Justin Marks, uh, Takashi Nishoyama, and Hiroshi Mastomoro. Um, they, uh, but mainly Justin Marks. I think the other people are just credited because they created the characters. Okay. So, for the video game. So. But Justin Marks, who has written this, The Jungle Book, and the story for Top Gun Maverick. Okay. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So he's really moved up. Yeah, he he wrote that. It was the it was the Jungle Book, um, the 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 live action remake that came out. Okay. Came out in twenty sixteen. Yeah. So okay, not not the cartoon or yeah, anime, but even like... even that is better than than Street Fighter: The Legend. Oh, Chun-Li. yeah. Yeah. So um, okay. I, mean, I think anything might be at this point, but uh, yeah. I, well, I, maybe not. But I, I I literally, I mean, we've watched a lot of movies, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again for other movies. This is quite possibly the worst film I have ever seen in my life, mm-hmm. and it's not one of these movies that is like so bad it's good it's just there yeah it's it's the boredom factor it's mm-hmm. yeah it's it's bad in ways that you wouldn't really necessarily yeah. think it's just one of those movies that just nothing happens it's just like a yeah. a long-winded <clears throat> like uh long-winded um what's the word i'm looking for like a. It's basically like, like kind of like how you always mention where it's like, if you have to tell the audience what's going on, then you're not really doing a good job. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, here's a train coming, or like, you know what I mean, or something like that. Like, yeah, like you know, where where you're basically spelling out what's happening, spelling out the narrative. Um, yeah, yeah. When you when you're when you're telling and not showing. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so, what were your thoughts on this? I oh, mean, I mean, just oh. it's it just boring. I didn't like it. I mean, I, I, I love Street Fighter. That's you know one of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. Street Fighter Two, oh. and the reason why it's called Street Fighter Two is a whole history behind. Oh, yeah. there actually is original Street Fighter arcade game. That's yeah, and a lot different. You could than also, the other. yeah, you could also play it on the um. Not Nintendo, one of the old video game systems. Um, yeah. I don't know, uh, Sega Master System, I think, and there was another... I can't think of the name. Whatever. And then, uh, and then, you know, Street Fighter 2 comes out, and it's just one... It's, like, one of the most iconic fighting video games of all time. It really is. And then, you know, so I'm like, oh, and Chun-Li, you know, and, you know, it's one of my fair characters, you know, because basically she was hot, you know, and it was like, you know, like, yeah, oh, yeah you know, and, you know, stuff like that, you know, yeah, hot cartoon character, whatever, sue me, but like, you know, I was like 10 at the time, you know. <laughs> I mean, when I was but a kid, then, I, I had a crush on Judy Judson, so I mean, come on, we'll just... There you go, yeah, yeah so, you know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, uh, and so, you know, and the, the same with Street Fighter 2, and like, I don't like the million... And I was like, Street Fighter 2 Ultra, Ultra HD, Ultra Max, or whatever. Like, they they didn't really have, like, a plot. It was just, like, it, it was, like, basically, like, a tournament. Like, Mortal Kombat. It's pretty much, like, similar. Although it doesn't have any, like, supernatural stuff to it. And then, 
there was like just loose stories around each character that didn't really like they really weren't fleshed out really that much yeah. but then so you can't really base a movie after chun Li or ryu or ken because there's really not much to go off of so they just like all right we'll just um we'll just construct a plot around her and just yeah make, i mean uh, and, and, and it's not a, story. it's not a bad day a bad bad idea i mean it's like it's like mm-hmm. you know but they failed it at all um so yeah you know exactly yeah, so 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 in the cast here we've got Kristen Crook from uh Smallville as Chun Li. She played uh Lana Lang on there. Um mm-hmm. we've got uh you know, just letting you know she's not the she she's uh not the uh the cult member, um cast member. So um <laughs> <laughs> Smallville. Um <laughs> We've got yeah, Neil, exactly. Neil McDonough as M. Bison. Yep. Um. Well, Damian Dark. Yeah. So so, so 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 we have two two DC comic book characters. Yep. And yep. then we then we have Chris Klein who played Cicada on Flash. So we got a third one. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about. Cicada. Yeah, he, he's uh he's um Charlie Nash. Then we got Michael Clark Duncan who was in a Marvel movie as uh as Kingpin. So um. Oh really? Which one? Daredevil. Um, with never a, saw that one. With the one with uh, Ben Affleck. Oh, I okay. I'm really weird. Most people hate that movie. I really like it. So, um, <laughs> well, because don't you have a good experience from watching that movie or something? Or, or no, I just really liked the movie. I, oh, okay. I I showed it at UT once when I at the University of Toledo. That's when right. I, yeah. When I was the president of the uh, Film and Video Society. That's right. But um, yeah, the um. <laughs> A DC and Marvel character because Ben Affleck played Batman. Yeah. In, uh, uh-huh. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's a lot of people that have been in both. And we got um, an actress named Moon Bloodgood as Detective. Um, oh, oh yeah. Um, Chris Klein was uh was Charlie Nash. We got Michael Clark Duncan as Barlog. About ba- ba- Bal Balrog. I'm sorry. He's one of the characters in the game too. Yeah, he is. He's, and then we've got uh, yeah, Charlie Nash. I don't believe is a character. Oh wait, he maybe he is a he is in the game actually. Oh, he is okay. Yeah, he's like a minor character. Um. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Moon Moon Bloodgood is a character named Detective Maya. Um. Suni. Um. Sunny Suni. I don't know. Um. We got Tab. What's that name? Yeah. She's gonna just need a real name, Boom Blood Good. That's a great name. I know it is. Great name. Um we've got uh we've got Taboo from uh the Black Eyed Peas as Vega. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. And then we got Robin um show as um as Again, a martial arts master. Um, he also was in Mortal Kombat, the movie. Okay. And and Mortal Kombat Annihilation as Liu Kang. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's done cool. two video game movies or series. Yeah. yeah. He was also in Beverly Hills Ninja with uh with um. That's Chris right. Farley. <laughs> Right, <laughs> yeah, Chris. And, yes, yes. And, and the character he's playing, I, I'm, I'll get into it more later. But it's supposed to be like an old man. Yeah, he was like 49 when he did this movie. Oh and wow! They, and, and they gave him like really gray hair, but it looked like um somebody had just put like spray paint on his hair. And, yeah, it looks uh, really it's big. it's oh. bad. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. not good at all. Okay, but oh. anyways, we, there's other people in the movie, but um, so. Okay, what? Okay, what? 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 What happens in this movie here? <laughs> Basically, what happens in this movie could be like said in like three minutes. Um, <laughs> between all the filler. Um, so Chun Li's dad is like some business person. They don't really explain what he does necessarily, but it's probably criminal, I guess. I don't know. And then um, he. Wants her to become a piano player, so he pretty much like forces her to practice all the time. But then she gets into martial arts, that he teaches her 
stuff and then uh the bison and Bal- balrog and bison break into their house one night get into a huge fight with them and then uh they basically kidnap her dad and then bison X really creepy towards the ten year old Chun Li. Yeah, and uh, then says something like, "Like we won't, we won't, we'll, uh, we won't hurt the schoolgirl or something like yeah. strokes or some shit like that." I don't remember. And it was like I don't understand like the whole school like why was that a thing like like I don't understand like why I don't know why she was referred to as the schoolgirl like why I think not she was just wearing the... a school uniform at the point. Oh, or okay, That's I see. Probably... I, all right, yeah, yeah. I was so... trying to figure out like what yeah the why that meant anything whatever not that i'm giving then, anything of any of the writing of this script any kind of credit but yeah exactly i think they were just being stupid i don't know and then yeah. so you know him and ball and i think balrog is basically like super strong and like nothing really like hurts him yeah like martial arts don't really do much to him because he's just like huge and he's got you know his muscles are like you know he's basically kind of like lift a car that's like his strength or whatever and so you know, he loses the fight against Balrog, and then they kidnap kidnap him. And, you know, they think maybe he's dead, you know, or something in fire. He might be dead or whatever. And then, uh, then it, like, goes up, like, maybe, like, eight years later or something like that. And Chun Li's, like, at a, like some kind of prestigious, uh, well, no, she's, like, a, like a concert pianist. Yeah, she's a and, concert uh, pianist. She's, like, really good at the piano. Yeah. And her, and so, and her mom's dying of cancer. That's right. So her mom's dying, and then uh, she she ends up getting this um, like she gets a bunch of like flowers, like you know they do to give people, and then like this someone sends her like this scroll with like ancient like lettering and stuff that she can't make out, and then like she ends up like taking it somewhere, or someone's in, like or, no, basically it's like she's like kind of like being like steered towards like this particular shop, like in the city, yeah. Uh, I think it was Bangkok. Yeah, that where it took place. Bank, yeah. Um, and then like this older woman, like reads her the script and tells her like what you know she needs to do is she needs to like do some go to Bangkok or do some I remember it's something like that. And then so like yeah, she visits her mom. Mom dies, and then she basically leaves to go, basically live on the streets for some reason. Um. Yeah, I don't mean, it's it's like she she wants to play homeless woman for a few. Days I, I don't understand. I, don't I mean, she it sounds like she comes from money. So yeah, I don't she's know, rich. She she has a fucking mansion. So I don't know exactly what that's about. But so mm-hmm. yeah, she was like basically living on the streets for a while, trying to find Gen, and then Gen is like always been like watching out for her this whole time. Like these guys are beating him up on the train station, and she went to help him out. And then he was also like sweeping the street, and now he like bumped into her, and that's what led her into that shop. Yeah, and he has a spider and, web tattoo. Yeah, they got that. Yeah, so it's like basically it's like this whole like journey thing where they're like trying to nudge her, and that you know you seem like that would be like a decent plot, but it just kind of goes nowhere from there, basically. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like, so, so so far what we've got here, it starts out. There's a lot of narration in this movie too at different yeah, points. Yeah, that I think was a afterthought. Yeah, probably. Because I think what what happened is they probably had some test audiences that had no clue what the fuck was going on. <laughs> exactly. And they're like, hey, let's bring Kristen back in and have her record some narration so people know what the fuck's going on. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Exactly. Happened. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the uh, but in the narration, she talks about, I, you know, at this time in my life, I didn't know who I was going to be. And it's like, OK. That implies that we're going to have a movie with character development. Yeah, exactly. Something that we don't have in this movie at all for any of the characters. No, nothing. Yeah, nothing. So, yeah. There's absolutely no, not even close. She's to the, the same person that she was when she was playing piano yeah. towards the beginning of the movie at the end of the movie. So, anyway, so, but, but anyways, we, we've got like, I'm gonna focus on her story first. Okay, so okay. we got. This. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if that's okay with you, um, we basically have her trying to rescue her dad, 
who's being kept captive in some kind of basement <laughs> place where it looks like he's taken care of pretty well. Oh yeah, I mean he looks by like bison. He's... Yeah, um, doing stuff for him that's never really explained. Nope, <laughs> not once. Some stuff on the computer of some sort. You not know? once. Did it, yeah, we don't know if he was like a shady businessman himself. There's never any no, like implication. Like you sort of maybe, but they don't really at all. It's weird for a movie that's full of narration. They have like no, no nothing like on this. Like <laughs> it's it's got tons of narration, but no plot. But um, yeah, yeah or no, no, no details to the plot at least. Yeah, we have um, we have one point where Bison kills all of his like rivals for some reason, never explained, <laughs> and it doesn't apply to the rest of the plot of the movie. No, nope. I don't know if it was just there to show how how bad he was or what, you know, it's just... It was just a one-off, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Because there was nobody that we gave a shit about that he killed. There was, you know, like, gave a shit one way or the other, like, and nobody we hated or liked <laughs> that was killed. They were only on it... screen for, like, 30 seconds. Yeah, they were only in one scene. Basically, is that he was a bunch of crime families that worked together, and he wanted to take over, basically, was like, you can either join me, or we're just gonna kill you, you know, type of thing, so... Yeah, you know, <clears throat> but there's no reason. It's not like, oh, because I need to take over the town because I've got to, you know, get the who's a what's it from the, yeah, fr from from you guys because you guys have control of the who's a what's it, you know. There's, it, it, there's it nothing gets, like that. <laughs> there's no, yeah, there's no. Anyway, I'll, I'll yeah, after, I'll get to Bison later on or something because that's a whole other story. You know? Yeah, we'll, well, we can go more into Bison, but anyway, so he. It's, see, okay, my thing is, there are two movies here. Yeah. One movie is about this guy, Charlie Nash, catching up with this uh, detective, Maya, and looking into this character named Bison. Their whole... All of their scenes could be excised from this movie, and the plot would be the same. Mm -hmm. What little of the plot there is. There was no need for them to be in the movie. It, it, it's it's kind of like when we when we watched our friend's movie, um, the um, the the, the reconciler, when you had that <laughs> whole plot about the woman interviewing people that had nothing to do with the rest of the story. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All the scenes with Charlie and Maya have nothing to do with the rest of the story. They at least yeah. kind of kind of connect, but it's like. Well, they only connect in so far as, you know, he's looking for Bison and trying yeah. to track or whatever, but it, that's it. It was filler. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, I don't know. I'll, I'll go into them first, and then we can go back to we can go back to our our title character, our um, hero. Yeah. You can call her that, I guess. Um. So <laughs> <laughs> we've got um. Basically, this kind of like um. Will they won't they thing going on between uh you know sexual tension between uh Maya and Charlie, but it starts immediately after they meet. Yeah, like thirty seconds in. Like, <laughs> I mean, a lot of this just seems like something like okay. I'm not trying to say anything bad necessarily about like um, like the Arrowverse or something like that, but this feels like. Scenes out of Arrowverse TV shows, yeah. but not from the first episode. From like an episode, like you know, ten episodes in. Yeah, that's what the writing of the of the characters feel like. Like we're supposed to know, oh, you know, hey, it's good old Charlie Nash, you know, our 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 friend. But no, we just met him. We yeah. have no detail about him. We don't know anything about him. We don't know if he's, you know, been a cop for four days or 40 years. You know, we don't know anything <laughs> about him. <laughs> it's like, huh. same thing with Maya, you know, and all yeah. we know is like their positions and their names. You know, it's like, I don't know it. And, and they're trying to play off like. Chris Klein's a good actor. 
but I think to his detriment, this movie, the writing is horrible. It sounds like it was written by a chat GPT. It does. And, um, or, you know, or, or like I was saying, like, some of his dialogue is like, anytime he's, um, I was telling you this earlier off, off, uh, air, like, when, whenever he, uh, signs off on the walkie talkie, he's like, Nash out. Yeah. Well, yeah. like a nine-year-old playing cop in your backyard yeah it's yeah. it's what it is it's like you know nobody actually does that like over over and out you know whatever like. yeah i mean the only people that ever like signed on and off were like you know i don't know like smoky and the bandit on their cbs or something you know what i mean right. it's like yeah, i don't know what the fuck yeah I know. yeah and 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 um to the detriment of all of the actors in this movie, most of the dialogue in this movie was dubbed. Oh, was it? Because I don't. It, it just did not sound natural to the locations where they were. I don't think they got good audio on set, and oh, so they okay. they brought people back in to loop their dialogue. Gotcha. And, okay. Um. So it sounds kind of hollow. It. And it almost sounds like yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't sound natural. Well, I kind of like that one movie we watched. Uh, was it Attack of the Killer Computer? What was it called before that? It was um, it had a name before that. It was um, oh that uh, yeah that I I I vaguely remember that movie, but yeah, I remember what you're talking about. But yeah. they were dubbed too, pretty much. Yeah, and I... this wasn't quite as bad as that, but it was. No, no, it yeah, wasn't. it was pretty. It's pretty <laughs> obvious that they brought them in to dub all the dialogue again because they couldn't get good audio on set. Um, exactly. Yeah, so... Yeah, that... But basically, their whole... Their whole story is just basically coming in and out of the other story. But not really interacting much with Chun-Li or anything. So, yeah, it's you, just... I don't know if like you want, said, if you want to like, take over and give more of the details. Yeah, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I'll I'll help out with that. But yeah, it's just like it's like three separate stories that like barely intersect with each other. Like it, it's it, like they're barely tied to each other at all. And so yeah, you got the Chun Li is like basically like being trained to be kind of like a spy. But they don't really go into that either. Like when the when Gen's like teaching her how to like do like basically like magic with her fighting skills or something like that. And then like at one point she's like going to like a club and like somehow she just happens to know that the woman who's like I guess like Bison's right hand woman is a lesbian or bisexual, which they again like they there was no like, how did she know this? It was never explained, you know? Yeah, that, that, so that, she... that whole scene. So, okay, here here's the thing. You have mm -hmm. the, the woman as a lesbian. This is this is me looking at it, for, like, you know, I don't know, as, like film criticism here. There's, mm -hmm. a thing, there's a thing in film called the gaze. It's usually the male gaze. Mm -hmm. G-A-Z-E, not G-A-Y-S. Right. Um, no, just, yeah. just, just making sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um... Because we're talking about a lesbian, so I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Right, right. Um, yeah. So, but basically, <laughs> you know, it, it's usually the male gaze where you'll have a thing where you'll you've got like your hero or your villain kind of looking over at a hot girl, and right, and and you and you can do the pan up and down of the woman's body or whatever have you. That's not necessarily that's that happened a lot in the eighties and you know, oh, yeah. stuff like that. So. We're hitting 2009 here with this movie where there's a little bit more, you know, sensitivity when it comes to things like that. So yeah. the way they can get around that is make it through the eyes of a lesbian character. Right, exactly. Which doesn't like, make oh, it, okay. it does, they, they think it makes it better. It does. Well, it, they, they do think that, yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, it's okay, guys. Like, But it and, doesn't. Yeah. It, 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 it's still just putting your cameras on women dancing. Yeah, in a sexual manner, oh. to you know, get your little thirteen-year-old boys excited about the movie. Yeah, 
Which, you know, I'm not even sure if that would even happen just because of how stupid the movie is. Yeah, but... I, I, honestly, I think most 13-year-old boys would be checked out by this point in the movie, so. Oh, because there's nothing going on. It's yeah. Just... And, uh, I mean, plus, too, I mean, you know, you could also make the argument, they're like, well, you know, her character is kind of a slimy person, so, therefore, that's something that she would do, you know, whatever, but, like. I mean, it, I it, 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 it's kind of like the whole thing, like, I mean, the 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 glorified rape scene in a movie too, you know what I mean? Oh, like God. where where people do that like, oh we had to show that to show how evil the guy was. No, oh, you, no you didn't. No, you... you could you could have it talked about, honestly. But yeah, that that's the sort of thing, you know. Honestly, yeah. I've only felt comfortable with with sex scenes in general in movies. I don't think they're useful at all. I don't think there's any point it doesn't do anything there's... for the story. Yeah. I mean there's there's but especially rape scenes are even yeah. way worse. There, there's, I mean, I mean, I, I think movie scenes where you have somebody like kiss somebody, or you, or even implying that they're going to have sex are okay, but mm -hmm. yeah, but like a blatant like sex scene in a movie, I've never understood the point of it's just, because it it, 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 it never yeah. moves the plot forward. No, it's just a way to kind of attract the adults. Yeah, you know, it's being softcore pornography essentially in a movie theater. Yeah. I don't know, but like so, you know, Shadley is like seducing her with her eyes and. You know, kind of flirts with her a little bit and dance for her. And then, then she kind of like teases her and then kind of just walks away. And then she kind of looks back and like kind of motions her head to go upstairs with her. So the woman follows her into the bathroom and then Chud Lee starts fighting her and it turns into this whole fight scene and whatever. Fine. And then, um, Chun Li barely wins the fight, which is weird because she's supposed to be like this super martial artist and the other woman i don't think she was even like knew that much but she was able to almost like hold her own against chun li which is okay yeah. i mean and, and, and then and, uh it, it, yeah it, it, it's also like a, another thing too with her being bad and being a lesbian too it, it it's the it, it's the whole basic instinct sort of thing where you perpetuate oh, yeah. the, the 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 lesbian as the evil person you know it's just right like, because she's like aggressive and <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. I've seen that a lot of movies yeah. too, where it's like you can't just have like a bad female character just like be a bad female character. She's always gonna be bisexual or lesbian or and or trans even. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just like, okay, like we get it. Like, come on. And then um and so yeah, Chun Li wins that fight. She gets the information out of her because she's gonna break her arm or she didn't tell. And then Bison just appears to, like the beat the other living shit out of her, which is weird because like we got a man just like totally wailing on a woman who's like you know like tied up like with a rope and shit. I'm, like, see, I I was under the impression that she was already dead and he was just beating on her like a, we just like a punch. her. Yeah, okay, I, I think like... he was just using her as a punching bag. Oh my! Well, that's even worse. <laughs> that's that's even creepier. But that's the way I read it. So <laughs> wow, that's like way worse. Yeah. So um, <laughs> and so you know she she's gone her now and um, and then so then we get into the bison story, which is again like almost separate from the Chun Li story, in that there's this weird thing where bison essentially wants to like buy the neighborhood that he grew up in but then like wants to like gentrify it yeah but at the same time he likes it being the slums because he grew up in the slums yeah but in so th wants... this this incarnation of bison unlike the raul julia you know like i don't know like mm. guy wearing military garb in the first uh street fighter movie you know um and in the video game he's a uh, He's like the orphan of some Irish people that were living in in Hong Kong or wherever, or Bangkok yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah, and and so he was Irish. He's got this. I mean, I've I've actually heard Neil McDonough do a good Irish accent, not so much in this movie. And I don't know if that was because of the dubbing of his dialogue or whatever, but. It was just like this, I don't know, if, or if he was just trying to do like a, a slight Irish accent with some kind of like, you know, Bangkok accent like mixed in there or something. Right. I didn't even notice he was doing an accent, actually. Um, oh, yeah, he he was. It was it was off-putting um, okay. to me. So, <laughs> the, but, but yeah, yeah he, I, didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention. I, yeah, but, but, um, but, but yeah, he, he's like, he's like, uh, I guess, uh, an orphan who was like raised there or something. So, yeah. 
he yeah he was an orphan because his parents died when he was really young and i guess like he just wasn't sent back to where he lives for some reason and then i don't know like yeah how that would happen but okay so then like he said something like i made my decision around her age talking about chun Li. no no some kid who was like because after he bought the neighborhood he pretty much just like cornered them all off basically and then like one of the kids was like staring at him through the car window and he was like I was around his age when I made my decision of what kind of person that was going to be or something like that. And of course, like he was going to be a bad person, which is weird. Like, why would you make a decision when you're 10 years old of whether you're going to be a bad person? I don't know. And then, uh, well, th- and there, so, there, like, th- there was that day that I had in social studies class when I was in, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I was in like, grade, and... grade, grade school where the teacher is like, okay, um, class, today we get to decide if we're going to be good or bad people. Um, yeah. <laughs> Totally. I mean, it makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, so, and then they get into this weird backstory where, you know, it's just shows him kind of growing up where he's like stealing things to get by. And, but he's still like sort of a good person. Like he kind of feels a little guilty about the bad things he does, but he doesn't want to feel guilty because he wants to continue building his empire. So then he has this wife. And he takes her into a cave, and there's, like, some ritual where if he, like, transfers, like, what little goodness he has in his soul into his child, then, like, that means that he doesn't have any goodness anymore, so he could just be a bad person. And, and he has no, no, no like, conscience, like, and, um... And so he kills his wife by, like, sticking his hands into her yeah, belly, he, he basically rips his kid out of her. It's... Yeah, yeah and then... Which I again with the whole narration thing, I didn't know if his wife knew that what was going on because it seemed like the cave already had like a bunch of like ritualistic shit in it. So I think she would have like questioned like why is there like candles and shit in here, you know? <laughs> like and it's like yeah, we're, it's, time, it's time to give birth to the baby. Um, you know, we, we could go over, so... we we could go over to the hospital or we can go to this weird cave, you know? So. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if she was in on it, like she knew that she was going to be like a sacrificial lamb type figure, or if she didn't know, who knows, again, they don't, they didn't explain any of this stuff, and then, so then like, that's his thing that allows him to just basically like, just do bad shit, he doesn't feel bad about it, but then, but then at the same time he does, because like, he was supposed to basically just like abandon the daughter and just like let you know basically like just let her go so he doesn't worry about like but then like he wanted her back anyway so i don't know and then um but they didn't really explain that too well either and then yeah, I mean, they, they, they so didn't that's get, like they the didn't MacGuffin give, of the movie is her yeah. like and yeah they didn't give i mean and she's called the white rose yeah that's right the white rose yeah, yeah. And, and he didn't give i mean th- there was no reasoning that he wanted her back it wasn't like even like Oh, I want her because she's my blood, and I need her to fulfill this destiny or something. They gave right. no reason whatsoever, and it's not like <laughs> it, it, he he took all of the good out of him. And I always associate love with good, so yeah, it's not like he I, I, I he 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 pretended to love her, or at least said he loved her. So I'm confused. So if all the good was taken out of him, how can he how can he feel love? It's just bad. You know, exactly. It's, it's bad writing. Weird. <laughs> no, I know. It's just terrible writing. It really was. And the thing is, too, when I first, my, my first thought was way darker when I first saw her because she was Russian. Yeah. It sounded like she was speaking Russian. And she was in, like, a train car. And my first thought was, oh, my God, bison is human trafficking people. Yeah. Like, cause that, that's what I was thinking because, you know, he has no conscience, you know. So I thought that was, like, one of his you know, enterprises, you know, or whatever. But then it was like, oh no, she's his daughter and for some reason she's there. Yeah. I don't know. And then uh and at first I was wondering if she even like had like a personality or if she was literally just kind of like a vessel for his goodness. Like she didn't even have like a mm-hmm. like you know what I mean? Like she was just like a human body that didn't really have like her own thoughts, you know, kind of thing. I don't know. It was just weird. It didn't make any sense. Or, you know, the plot would have been kind of cooler if he, like, wanted his, his goodness back, and then she could, like, transfer it to him and it'd be, like, her own person. 
and then he would like feel guilty about all the shit he did. No, nothing like that. You know, and then, uh, but there is one scene though. Like, so I remember this movie reminds me a lot of like the nineties, like martial arts movies, even though it was made in 2009. Yeah. And one of the things that they did was, so I don't know if you remember this, like nineties action movies had what I describe as two main things. One thing, yeah. Almost every action movie with guns, there's at least one gun with a silencer. It has to be requirement. Yeah. Uh, you watch old '90s movies with guns. It's like it's like silencers all oh, over yeah. the place. Like I don't know why they thought that was a cool thing, but it's like every like all the James Bond movies, all of the. And another thing is, it's because it's, of the sound. It's the it's the it's the it's the it's the pew, it's, pew, it's pew, a, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's got like a little like cute little sound. Like, and then um, another thing is that. They were obsessed with killing people by breaking their necks. Like almost mm-hmm. every '90s and '80s movie with martial arts, people were just breaking necks like all over the place. And like that stopped for a while. And then mm-hmm. this movie, though, they bring it back where they he, he kills Chun Li's father in front of her by breaking his neck. Yeah, which I mean, is I, I know. Traumatic. I, I know in the in, in, in the in the mythos of the video game supposedly she's she's actually an Interpol agent who uh in the in the in the in the video game world who oh, okay. who who has has been trying to revenge the death of her father. So okay. that's that sets her forward. So a, a, as a uh as an origin story, that's cool, but the fact is they, they built this whole thing up to being like the the, the thing she wanted to do, like her goal to accomplish in this thing was to save her father. Right. But then we get them together and they're only, they only interact with each other for 30 seconds and he dies. <laughs> exactly. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, it just seemed really uh, anticlimactic. <laughs> and then, so, so third story, I, I got, I got to say his line. I, I, I just, yeah. it. so when, um, when Nash is narrating, um, about bison, like, you know, he's traveled to, like, three continents, and then at one point, he turns away from Maya. It's almost like he's looking directly into the camera, although he's not, and he goes, he walks through raindrops, or something like that. <laughs> it's, like, the worst line of a movie ever. Like, and, like, you can almost see the look on his face where he's, like, almost cringing as he's saying it, like, God damn it, they're gonna make me say this. Like, and, it's like see, poor see, Chris Klein. See, like, I, know, I know Chris Klein at one point had, like, a had like a, a, I think a drug and alcohol problem in his real life. Okay, makes me wonder if this was during that point. Maybe I don't know. But I don't know. Yeah, he's like he walks through raindrops or something like that. Yeah, like to show how sneaky he is. I guess I don't know. And then um, yeah. So you got that going on. For some reason, there's this whole thing where Bison's people don't know Chris Klein. I mean. Nash exists, nor Maya, mm-hmm. but for some reason, Nash thinks that he has to, like, make out with Maya in the car while they're stakeouting them for some reason, and then, like, that's supposed to be, like, their big first point of, like, sexual tension or whatever, and it was just, whatever, it was just stupid, and then, um... Yeah, this was during his time with his alcohol problems. Okay. Yeah, because it, it, he uh, he was first arrested for drunk driving on in two thousand five, and then again in two, in two thousand ten. So it was okay. like this was right in between that. So yeah. So okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh-huh. It was just bizarre, man. I uh-huh. don't know. And like, yeah, the, the Nash story is just it's useless. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't do anything from the story at all. Um, I mean, the the Chun Li story barely has anything to do with the Chun Li story anyway. But... <laughs> I mean, it does it. I mean, like it's it's just like this. This so was more end, a this was more a movie about bison. It, no, it was. It was like bison's origin story. Yeah, yeah. more than anyone else's. Because we got the whole goodness soul transferish weird mm-hmm. thing going on, and then for some reason he wants his daughter back for no particular reason whatsoever. And then we have the big battle scenes um, again. They, you know, they thought they killed Gen, but he turned out to be alive. He kills Balrog by like electrocuting him, I guess, or something. I don't remember. And then, um, and then, uh, Vega dies somehow. I forgot how. And then, uh, Vega 
was like one of my favorite characters in the game, and he was so stupid in this movie. He was useless. She, she, like, she kicked his ass like right away. Yeah, it was like and, okay, and, and, like, and, and, and I don't think that that was um was uh the actor's real voice was um was Taboo's real voice because it sounded like it was dubbed. Like okay, if, if it is, I don't know if Taboo's voice is really that deep, but it just seemed right. it, it sounded like they took his voice and like ran it through some kind of machine or something. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, yeah, it was very robotic sounding. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so Vega and yeah, she she pretty much makes short work of him in the beginning and in the end. And then and then she ends up defeating Bison with the help of Gen. And then like that's when she starts doing like her special moves that you could do in the video game, which they didn't yeah. explain how she was able to like have like these magic <laughs> powers all of a sudden. It's just and something then, that happens, I guess. And then, so she, um, to put it lightly, murders um, Bison in front of his like ten year old daughter, and like there's like she's not oh, getting, that she's daughter not was around. older than ten. Well, whatever. I yeah. don't know. I mean, what, <laughs> oh, just, she's a kid. Who knows? But yeah. Whatever. I'm just saying. Like, I don't know. Wh- whatever. He kills kills in front of her child. You know. Yeah. Like, I mean. You know, who's obviously like still really young and that's traumatizing. Oh yeah. And then like she does it by like literally like jumping and breaking his neck, but like with her legs. And he's like, she's like already like fifty feet above him because he's like laying on some kind of like steel beam or something. Yeah. And his head's kind of hanging off it, and she jumps down and like spins her legs and then cracks his neck with her legs. Which I would have think would have just tore his head off mainly, but like I don't know. That... <laughs> yeah, and then she's not even arrested for murdering someone. Like they're no, like Tra- Charlie. Like lets they her watched go. it. The police watch her murder this guy <laughs> who's no longer a physical threat to her, and they're just like, eh. You know? <laughs> but, but but Charlie, like basically the the other police are coming, and Charlie's the only one that really saw it. Oh, okay. So he's okay. like kind of like get out of here, kid. You know, sort of thing. And... But he's the cop. Murder, okay. okay. Yeah, cool. he's like complex. And <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and so, so so then we have like this uh, tacked on scene where she's moving back into her mansion, you know, because she didn't learn anything. And um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and then Gen shows up again, pun yeah. intended. Again, um, <laughs> get it? Yeah. Again, yeah. yeah. And yeah. uh, basically, kind of sets up a sequel that we never saw. And um, <laughs> yeah, exactly about Ryu. Like, yeah. all right, we're gonna get Ryu. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, poor. I mean, I think that Street Fighter could be turned into a good movie. It just hasn't happened yet. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got Chun Li. You know, again, she's an Interpol agent. That's a pretty cool story. Yeah. Um, you got Ken and Ryu. They both have like the uh-huh. same powers. It looks like they're both trained by the same person, so that would be a cool story to go on because they literally have the same exact, like they're just like an even match for each other. You know, um, uh-huh. they you know they got the same Hayuka, they got the same spin kick going on. You know, Ryu just wears a white robe and Ken wears a red one. You know, and uh... <clears throat> but yeah, there's no Ken. I thought maybe I see. At first, I thought Nash uh-huh. was Ken. I'm like, oh, oh that's yeah. kind of cool. Like, no, no. No. Um no, why would they do that, you know? So Yeah, it's like um There is uh Yeah, there 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 is like right now they're in talks to uh make another Street Fighter movie. Okay. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, exactly. We'll see how we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Leg- and, uh, Legendary uh, Entertainment is in process of they they announced okay. they they acquired the film and TV rights to Street Fighter franchise. Okay. Yeah, and then um, Danny and Michael Filippo are in talks to direct a film. They are. They directed the movie Talk to Me. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, don't know of anything else they've done. But anyways, they uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's that yeah. <laughs> any other, that's any yeah. other thoughts here? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my main thing about the takeaway from this is, is that, okay, the dialogue was horrible. The acting could have been better. The directing was pretty bad. Hey. The editing was horrible. The pacing of everything was horrible. Like, they would cut from, like, something kind of slow to something fast and then back to... Like, it just didn't make any sense. Yeah. There, there was no good pacing at all. And there was no good pacing either. I mean, you need you need to have, like, Joshua Jackson in there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, sorry, no. <laughs> yeah, no good pacing. Yeah. <laughs> well. But yeah, that, that I don't know. I, I, I was reading... Um... A good um, one of the I, I under in in um Wikipedia under reception, like you know for the they talk about like reviews and stuff in there. Film historian Leonard Malton stated the nineteen ninety four picture was one of the worst movies ever inspired by a video game. And even <laughs> yeah. even Jean Claude even Jean Claude Van Damme fans couldn't <laughs> rationalize this turkey, which should have been titled uh. 400 funerals and no sex i don't know why you call it that but anyways because it came out the same year as four weddings and a funeral or something i don't know oh okay he's a yet this pointless and inept action vehicle makes its predecessor predecessor seem like gone with the wind um (laughs) hopeless hopelessly contrived with lamely choreographed fight sequences highlight is uh chris klein's cry of bomb Get out now. Our sentiments exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah. yeah. So the movie was a bomb, wow. bomb in his opinion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. My other thing, you know, Nash out. You know, yeah, get out of there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, and this guy, Ryan Davis of Giant Bomb, described it as a re envisioning of the source material by people who can't see. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um... Yeah, and then people are talking about, like, you know, Justin Mark's uh, solemn screenplay lacks any trace of wit. Like, it just doesn't have Yeah, it. yeah there's... There, I mean... <clears throat> I mean, on its surface... You could get. I mean, because if if you look at like some modern like action films, like Marvel ones especially, sometimes the plot is really kind of thin. But it's the dialogue that make it worth watching. You know, it's just like this didn't even have that. You know, so yeah, like like I was watching um Shazam: Fury of the Gods last night. I didn't watch the whole thing, but like there was like you know these funny. Little juxtapositions here and there where it was yeah. like, you know, like we got to save the bridge, and then it's like the bridge collapses or something like that in the newspaper or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, little I've... things like that. No, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, um, <laughs> this movie hurt my soul. Yeah, for the it's fact that good... the fact that I mean, it, it was, uh, it had a fifty million dollar budget. What? Yeah. Way. Yeah, fifty um, fifty million. How is that even possible? I don't know. And it only made twelve point eight at the box office. So did all that m- m- money go to Bison or something? I mean, like, what the hell? Like, I I mean, honestly, nobody in this movie was a big star. I mean, they're 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 known for things, but like, yeah. but like Chris Klein is like the the you know, part of an ensemble in American Pie. He's not, like, the lead, you know. That's, like, more like Jason Biggs or something. But, yeah, you he know. He was in all movies. He was yeah, in all I mean, Neil, Neil McDonough what? has always been a good supporting actor. Yeah. And, and Kristen Crook wasn't the star of Smallville. She was the co-star. But, I mean, you know, it's like she was a TV star at the time. And that was still, yeah. we, in 2009, we were still at the point where it, TV people were looked down upon. Right. You know, it, it's... You know, Michael. Not, you know, honestly, probably the biggest star in this movie at this point was Michael Clark Duncan. 
Oh yeah, that's the other thing too. I was surprised. I'm like, why is he in this movie? Like, yeah, it, it was just. And again, he was acting so stupid. I, I, mean, I mean, before this, he's he he had already been in Scorpion King and Sin City yep. and uh, and you know the whole nine yards and uh, not to mention you know you know the Green Mile. Oh, I know that's a huge yeah. movie. Yeah, you know, um, and you know, I'm saying you know he's he. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if half that budget went to him. So... It might have been. It might have been. Yeah, yeah just to get, have his name. But then again, but they should have been. But the thing is, is he's not even. I mean, I saw one movie poster where he's kind of on it, but but the major like covers for the DVD and other things, he's not even on them. (laughs) They should have made him the main character. Yeah, but then again, Balrog is not really a main character in the game where he's not the most popular. So then, what they should have done is they wanted to make an action movie with Michael Clark Duncan. They should have just. You know, made an act. You know, not done a Street Fighter game. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's. I mean, a Street Fighter movie. Sorry, and um. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah, Balrog is really not like most no. people don't really like to play as him because he's a boxer. He's not really. Yeah, he's kind. He's kind of. No. A, he's kind of a B level character. From yeah, the, he's from not the video like game. you know yeah. like Chun Li. She's got the cool kick moves. Yeah. Now uh, Ryu and Ken got that cool Hayuken. Yeah, Hayuken kind of thing. Uh. You got the Russian dude who's like a huge, you know, like big guy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, Vega, because Vega climb on fences and shit. He's got those spiky things on his hands or whatever. Yeah. yeah it's just, I, I don't know what they were thinking with this movie. Um, The the concept could have done been, been done well if you had a decent story. Like, you know, give me a week or so and I could write you a better story. Oh, of, I'm of, sure. Of a backstory for, for Chun-Li than this. But um, yeah. don't you know? I don't want to waste my time doing that. Um, but... <laughs> they already tried it once. I wouldn't mind seeing another movie about Chun Li, though. Well, yeah, uh, a good movie. Though. Honestly, like... I I think Street Fighter could make a good TV series. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, like where you could like focus on the characters more in depth and do things. You know, like you know, you, you just like a large ensemble cast where you could you know give a little bit of backstory. Like one episode's about you know. Sh- one character or next episode's about another character, you know, sort of things like that. It'd be interesting. But anyways, um I think that's about all we have to say about that, right? Yeah, I'm pretty much yeah. spent. Yeah, <laughs> me too. So um anyways folks, uh hope you enjoyed this episode. Um make sure you're good to each other. Um check out our uh T public, our Patreon Go to all 2 real com for all of our links and everything. Um, be sure to subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Share it with your friends. Um, you know, give us a review if you feel like it. Um, any of that stuff if you feel like it. I'm not telling you what to do. And well, yeah. um, and uh, like I said, be good to each other. Um, remember that I love you. Sesame loves you. <laughs> Mike out. <laughs> yeah that's me over <laughs> yeah. and uh until next time bye bye thanks for listening to all too real right. two podcast a cullen park production produced and edited by michael e cullen the second music by matthew haas subscribe and share the show visit us at cullenpark.com two.